Hey guys, it's Void Concept here. Welcome to this week's Storytime Saturday. Uh, this is going to be Archery Part 2. I wasn't sure what it, uh, exactly to talk about um, other than archery, so I'm just going to continue off where um, I started last week. So, um, I, I guess I'll start off with how I got into archery, which I kind of covered a little bit before. I uh, we it, of course my first uh exposure to archery was in Cub Scouts Cub Scout Day Camp where every year they all the Cub Scouts gather and we do different uh activities and one of which was archery. Um so I've already told you the story about that one range master that let adults shoot and uh, my mom loving it. So when we found out that our neighbors down the street uh, went to this archery range, we decided to head out there ourselves. Now, when we started um, down there, the amount of people that shot there was a very, very small amount. Uh, the archery range had just gone through a fire right before we moved to where we are now. Um, and so not everything was completely set up yet. And one of the bins, which we still have, uh, full of equipment, uh, it had the 3D targets for the hunter range, um, was burned in that fire. Everything else was still fine, so... Um, it was about a year after that we went there. All the hay bales had been burned. Um, so the range was quite small when I first started off there. I don't know how it was before that. I think it was still pretty much the same size. But it was really small. Um, so anyways... On a given weekend, back when I started, we probably had around 30 people there. Uh, that may be an overestimate. It may have been less. And there were three main distances, plus a uh, another target that you could set out uh, whatever distance you like. There was 5 meter, 10 meter, and 18 meter. And it was all smushed down into this one little section of the uh, range we have out there. And it slowly grew and grew until um, we started to run out of bows. Uh, and we, some of us had to share bows. I was one of those people that had to share bows. Um, and it was this orange uh, plastic riser, um, little cheap bow. Uh, it's still better than any of the Cub Scout bows, as we call them, those fiberglass, horrible red things that are multi-sided. Um, but uh, it was number 21, and <laughs> I still remember the number. And I think we still have that bow somewhere. Uh, I don't know if it's used. It probably is, actually. We run out of equipment on a daily basis, or I guess weekendly basis. Um, so, uh, I guess after a while I got my own bow, and it was, uh, I don't know if it was a bullseye, uh, like cheap wood bows, and by cheap I mean it was like $80. And that's cheap for a bow. My current bow, without any of the equipment on it, we bought for $800. So, yeah, cheap. And I quickly went through that bow uh, and got... And by went through, I mean used it for a while. And then I think we donated it to the club, so it may be even used still. Um, and then... I had this Evolution 2 um, by Cap, made by Cap, um, that I used for many, many years. And then eventually, I think it was, 
either my 15th or 16th birthday, I got a Hoyt Nexus. And that's my current bow, the one that cost $800 without any of the equipment on it. Of course, I've got stabilizer, sight, uh, plunger, um, I'm missing something, clicker. I think I'm, I don't know if I'm missing something else, but <laughs> all that on there. So it's probably, if bought new, well over a thousand dollars. And all five of us have bows. Uh, my brother still has a T-Rex, or that's the new name for the Evolution 2, which I don't know why I called it the T-Rex. I like Evolution 2 a lot better, um, because he quit a long time ago. Uh, my dad has, like, three bows, so I don't know <laughs> which one he's using now. Uh, my mom also has a Nexus, and my sister has an Excel. Um... So, yeah, it's, we've come a long way since we started. I, I still remember back in the day, um, we had to shoot a group the size of our fist, uh, like five times or something like that, um, at the five meter, which now I can put them all right next to each other, stack them up um, in the gold. No problem. Um, but back then, it was difficult for me. So I remember back then, when I got my 5, I, I just really wanted to go shoot the 10 meter. And when I moved over to the 10 meter, I didn't do so well. So I moved back to the 5 meter for the longest time. And I was doing some weird things, and I don't know why, what I was thinking back then, um, form-wise. Um, but eventually I moved up to the 10 and then to the 18, which is where I shoot primarily now. Although I've shot all the way out to 70 before, um, during competition even, and I don't think I can hit 90, uh, at least with my current setup. Um, but anyways, I guess I will leave it off there for a part three where I can talk about the competitions that I've been in. Um, and whatever competitions I've won. I'm looking at a stack of medals right now uh, that I hang on my desk that um, I think actually most of these are from uh, the club itself. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've got five medals that are actually from uh, state indoors, and I think an outdoor in there, maybe? I'd have to look at these closer. Um, oh, actually, all of them will say Joad indoor, or just indoor, because they don't have... Oh, wait, that is an outdoor. And that is a bronze. Okay. So, anyways, I'll talk about competitions next time. Um, so... I guess see you guys later. Oh, and one more thing before I end off, um, I forgot to talk about, was the Olympic archery team. Um, it turns out that when I was talking about the archery last time, I, we had one silver by one point. It basically came down to the last arrow. The Italian guy, which we lost to, uh, had to shoot a 10, and he shot a 10. If he shot a 9, he, he would have uh, sent us into a shoot-off. If he shot an 8, he would have, or we would be um, put into, or we would have won. So it came down literally to the last arrow.